planning your installation. In this nugget, we're going to talk about the issues involved in planning a Linux installation. Now, there are options for everything from which Linux distribution you choose to what software you install, and I'll help you decide what makes sense for your particular situation. So let's get started. When you're preparing to do an installation, one of the first questions you have to ask yourself is what's the purpose of the computer that you're installing? Is it a personal workstation, like is it going to sit on your desk at home and just function as a standalone computer, or is it going to be in some lab at a university and be networked with other computers, that kind of thing? Uh, is it going to be a server, like an email server or a web server? Uh, is it going to be a dedicated server? Is it going to function as other things as well? And you just have to determine like what the load that's going to be placed on this computer is, and generally servers have a higher load than workstations, so they have a little bit beefier hardware, like more memory, faster disks, that kind of stuff. We'll talk more about hardware in the next video. And then what's the other purpose of a computer? Who knows? I mean, computers do all sorts of things nowadays. Like uh, maybe it's controlling the manufacturing process at some plant. Or maybe you're recycling some old workstation uh, to serve as a router today. And a 10-year-old workstation could work perfectly fine as a modern-day router. Okay? So once you decide on what the purpose of your computer is, then the next thing you have to do is decide which operating system to use. And the way I've listed it here is just Linux versus other proprietary operating systems. Uh, maybe when I say the word proprietary, the first thing that pops to your mind is Microsoft. But, you know, Microsoft and Linux couldn't be more different. Like comparing these is like comparing apples and oranges. Uh, actually, it's more like comparing apples and asparagus, you know, fruits and vegetables. Just a completely different class of, of, of operating system. Microsoft's dominant in the home computing industry. It's dominant in the office computing. Okay, and Linux is more in the scientific computing uh, world, and, and the servers uh, are running Linux more often. Okay, so, so like I said, these just couldn't be more different operating systems. Uh, the people that are using Microsoft are not very computer savvy necessarily. Uh, you know, they, they, maybe they want the operating system to do a lot of stuff for them so they don't have to worry about it. But all that behind the scenes stuff drives Linux users nuts. They'd rather control every, every last uh, aspect of what the operating system is doing. Okay, so like I said, they just couldn't be more different. Now, if you're using Linux in some sort of, you know, organization where everyone else is using Microsoft, you're going to be fighting a little bit of an uphill battle, right? Because all those Microsoft users, you know, they're, they're commonly shipping files around and sharing files. And just because they're running the same operating system and the same software, it's easy for them to share files. But when they ship you off some Excel document, it's going to get a, be a pain in the butt for you to deal with that all the time. And, you know, there's emulators out there that, you know, emulate certain Microsoft programs but, but, you know, they, they don't work so well, and it's just, that's just not the way you want to use Linux, emulating Microsoft all the time, all right? So, so you know, a better choice would be just to abandon all the Microsoft software altogether and just run your Linux box. But like I said, if you're in some sort of a Microsoft organization, that's going to be tough to do, and, and you're going to be fighting a little bit of an uphill battle there. And people say that Microsoft is Linux's biggest competitor, but I don't really see that. Like I said, this is, you know, they're appealing to a different set of people, and they're just used in different circumstances, so I don't really see them as competitors necessarily. What I see as a bigger competitor for Linux are commercial Unix vendors. Uh, a vendor like Sun has Solaris. And uh, Silicon Graphics has IRIX. And these are just, uh, you know, flavors of Unix. And, and people are buying these, even though these are quite expensive, and Linux is out there for practically free. Okay, but the reason that people are, are still buying these commercial products is because, you know, they're high performance or they, they work better in certain situations and, and you know, they're, they're just more highly tuned for, for certain settings. And, and Linux, you know, every day is just stepping on these guys' toes just a little bit more and more. And it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out in 10 or 20 years. You know, how is the Microsoft versus Linux thing going? How is Linux versus Unix going? Are these guys just out of business? Are they lowering their prices? Have they somehow squashed the free software movement? Movement. You know, who knows how this is all going to play out. I suspect that Linux will, will hang in there. I suspect that commercial Unix vendors will, will slowly, uh, you know, start offering their products for cheaper and cheaper, maybe even free. Who knows? We'll see how all this plays out in 10 or 20 years. Now, once you decide that Linux is your operating system, which I'm assuming you have if you're watching these videos, uh, then the next thing you have to do is decide which Linux distribution that you want to use. I've listed four distributions here just because they each have some notable characteristic, but there's easily like five or ten more I can name off the top of my head that, you know, people like to use and are, are very, very good versions of Linux. Okay, I've, like I said, I've just listed each of these because they have some notable characteristic. For Red Hat, it's probably the most popular uh, version of Linux that's out there. Okay, and because it's popular, it's, it's pretty good to get support on, either through, uh, you know, the, the company itself, through Red Hat, or through other people because there's lots of people that use it. Uh, there's news groups out there, so you can get help on those news groups, more informal sort of help. 
Okay, so it's popular. It has support. Also, Red Hat has quite a number of graphical user interface tools uh, for the installation process and for configuring various services on the, on the computer. Okay, so that that's what differentiates Red Hat. Uh, Debian is probably the most stable version of Linux out there. When I worked at that internet company, uh, we had Debian on all our servers. They were you know serving up millions of pages a day, and and Debian was just rock solid. It never crashed. All right, so this, so that's probably the most stable version out there. Uh, SUSE or SUSE, some people call it, uh, is it can be distributed on DVD, and it also can come with tons of software. Uh, and so if some of that software appeals to you, then and you have a DVD player on, on your system, then maybe SUSE is the, is the version of Linux that you should try out. This is probably the most popular version of Linux in Europe right now. And then another end of the extreme is Slackware. Slackware is probably the oldest of any Linux distribution going. Uh, you know, there's no graphical user interfaces. This is probably like, you know, the most pure version of Linux in some sense. So if you, if you want the, lin the purest Linux experience, uh, Slackware would be the way to go. And what I want to do now is just show you where you can get all these and, and various other distributions that are out there. Let me just show you uh, where you can get some of those distributions that we were just talking about. I'm going to open up the Mozilla web browser here by clicking on that little red horse head. And uh, the Mozilla web browser is, you know, probably the most popular web browser in Linux. You could certainly use Netscape or something too if you'd rather. Um, let's go to www.linux.org. Okay, and at Linux.org, you'll see a site, a section down here called Distributions. I'll click on that, and uh, and and you know, there's a little bit of history here. Let's talk about that before we go down and look at the actual distributions and where you can get them. Uh, this guy Linus Torvalds is the guy who wrote Linux, and he wrote it back in '91. Okay, and he basically wrote the core of Linux, the kernel, which is like the the main part of Linux. Some new tools were added on. Uh, GNU is this company, it's or this organization. GNU's not Unix, is what that stands for. And you know, they wrote stuff for Unix systems, but they were independent of any Unix vendor. Okay, and and he got those some of those tools to work on Linux, and then eventually people just started adding on to Linux, and you know and it's got to the point where it's come to today. Well, what happened was, you know, once people started adding on to it, then people said, well, let me distribute my version of Linux because I've added this really cool new feature. And then somebody else said, well, I don't want that, I want this, and then somebody else would distribute that, and that's sort of how all these various distributions started coming about. You know, the core of Linux is still you know based on Linus's stuff. Okay, uh, and, but it, it doesn't matter which Linux you're talking about, but um, there's various distributions out there and there's all these companies that formed to distribute those distributions and, and uh, you know, add on to them and add some new features and graphical user interfaces and stuff like that. And those companies like Red Hat and Suzy and Caldera and Mandrake, okay, they're, they're all out there trying to make money off Linux and they're doing a good job at it. Uh, whereas the, an organization like Debian, okay, that's a non-profit organization that's distributing Linux. Very different situation, okay? Um, and, and you know, you just need to decide wh which ones you're going to like, which one you're going to use, and and this is a good search tool to to help you decide because it's not just like based on preference; it's based on like technical stuff. Like, um, you know, uh, like first let's look at the platform thing. If you have an Intel compatible computer, then every Linux out there is going to run on that because that's what it was originally written on. Um, but if you have a PowerPC or an Alpha or a Spark or something, then you're not going to have as many choices. So you should definitely search. If you've got one of these kinds and not an Intel, you know, search uh, for that and you'll see you have a restricted set of choices of which kind of uh, Linux you can run on your system. And then under category here, it just lists, you know, uh, various things like the Red Hat based, Debian based, Slackware based, uh, you know, security enhanced Linux, mainstream Linux, that kind of stuff. Okay, so, you know, that might not be too important to you, but, um, you know, certainly the platform is important and the language is important. Uh, if you don't speak English or something, then you have to find, you're probably not listening to to me now either, but uh, you know, then that's going to restrict your options as well. Okay, so let's just do a search here. Let's say uh, we're going to go for Debian based, and we're going to say Intel compatible, and let's see what it can find. Okay, so uh, it does the search, and and down here it lists all the options. Okay, there's this one. There's Alt Linux, which is uh, what a friend of mine uses. And you know, there's the website. There's the download locations. Corel Linux is another popular one. There's the website. You can actually buy it right here off of uh, off of Amazon.com right now. Uh, there's books about Corel Linux. There's download locations. Okay, so you can get all this stuff right off the web. Um, another cool uh, here's the Debian Linux one, and again, Debian Linux also has books out there. Another cool site, to, to, if you have a CD burner and a pretty fast internet connection, uh, you can go to linuxiso.org. 
Okay, and LinuxISO.org, it's just run by a couple guys, uh, so they're shelling the money out of their pocket for the uh, web servers and stuff. I think what they're doing though is they're not, they don't actually host all these different ISO images like.